Hello and welcome to Das Nostalgia. Doom has been in the public eye a lot more recently. Because a new Doom game was released and John Romero made two new levels for classic Doom, I've seen a lot of things written about good old Doom over the last few months. Just about everyone seemed to mention the Doom modding scene and how easy it was to modify Doom to your liking. I'd like to address that and a few other things in this video. Although there were examples of other PC games providing a way to modify them, Doom was the first of the newly emergent first-person shooter genre to do so. But modding back in those days was very different to what we understand as modding today. The game didn't ship with any tools or documentation. You couldn't modify Doom out of the box in 1993. The manual mentions nothing of this, and neither does the game's readme file. You couldn't run the game with a question mark as a parameter and find out what options you could run it with. So how did Doom allow modding then? Well, Doom allowed users to attach their own bank of data, called a WAD, which could contain graphics, sound, music and levels, and would be loaded in place of Doom's own resources. That is it. The rest was up to the community. A bunch of technically savvy fans had to figure out the way to do it, what the format of the WAD files and each type of the resource was, and create all the tools that allowed creating data in those new formats. And they did. Fairly quickly, I might add. But those tools often weren't very user-friendly. If you successfully edited Doom in 1994, my hat's off to you. Another common concept such as scripting was completely absent in Doom. Everything was hard-coded. It wasn't until someone figured out where all the values were inside the executable and allowed you to edit them using their tool called dehacked that anyone could get any complex modification going. Undoubtedly, large modding community played an incredibly big part in Doom's longevity. What I wanted to convey is that modding meant something completely different in 1994 from what it does today. And we shouldn't forget that. Now, another thing I'd like to discuss is this. Recently I overheard two people talking and it went something like this. Do you know what the first Doom mod was? It was a level inspired by Giger's Alien. And it didn't have any enemies in it. So the first Doom mod was a walking simulator. So this is what I have to say about this. Unlike many things in video game history, the Doom community is very fortunate to be rather well documented. All kinds of records exist, complete with dates, names of people, and many other interesting details. Because of that, we know that the first Doom mod, or PWOD as the user-created WODs are known, is called Origwad and was uploaded by Jeff Bird on March 7th, 1994, less than three months after the game's release. And was created entirely by hand precisely because there were no capable editing tools available at the time. It contains a simple level consisting of two square rooms separated by a door, a bunch of enemies, a shotgun and an exit switch. So hardly a walking simulator. What that person was probably confusing it with is Alien's Total Conversion. The first all conversion for Doom released on November 3rd, 1994. Its first map indeed didn't have any enemies on it. But the same can't be said of the rest of the game. In the end, despite not knowing that person or being a part of that conversation, I felt that what they said was done as a defense of walking simulators as a genre. And to be honest with you, I don't think walking simulators, despite how much I hate the term itself, need any defense. Doom has a built-in walking simulator mode to begin with. Running the game with a no monsters parameter allows you to enjoy any map free of enemies. But more than that, since the old days of gaming we had multiple examples of interactive medium focusing on environmental exploration and not gameplay mechanics. That was true during the interactive fiction days in the 8-bit computer era, as well as the 3D phase during the 80s and in the 90s during the Macromedia Director days. Environmental exploration games have always been here. They are a very legitimate use of interactive medium, and until recently, no one really questioned their validity. Walking simulators don't need any defense using Doom to prop them up. They have been here before Doom, and they belong in this vast and rich world of video games. Thank you.